Good morning, everyone. On behalf of our inter-institutional team of collaborators, I present to you an update of our progress on our fish barcoding of life project that is funded by the FBIP. The long-term objective is to develop a comprehensive DNA barcoding library to assist in cataloging our rich biodiversity, but more importantly, once we've got that database in place, it will enable rapid and accurate species identification as species is still the currency in all conservation planning. And this is also a very useful tool in terms of monitoring and compliance enforcement and traceability. The short term aims of our project is to compile all of the available resources and add to it for our 139 most exploited lionfish species in addition, we are evaluating the different protein coding genes in the mitochondrial genome to see if we can maybe find better markers than the widely used cytochrome oxidase 1, and then to generate new reference barcodes using these tools. So at the bottom there, um, you can see it at the University of Guelph's um, website. This is the standard that is followed in the Barcode of Life project that is creating this huge database <laughs> You preferably need a reference specimen, you extract the DNA from it, and then the electropherogram in the third picture there is turned into what looks more familiar to us as a barcode. All of that information together with where the voucher is located is then uploaded in that bold database. So where are we at the moment? Two years into the project, we're almost halfway there. Um, so you don't have to look at the detail in this image. The important part is the green segment where we now have full barcodes with all the associated information, a DNA sequence, a voucher specimen in the National Fish Collection, a photograph and spatial information for 62 of the 139 species. Some of the highlights of the things that we find while we're doing this is some cryptic diversity in the sand tiger shark in figure A, where the green is animals from South Africa, and they share a haplotype with some of the sharks from elsewhere in the southern hemisphere, but we have a large genetic difference between them and sharks from the rest of the world. This is not the end of the story. We need to further investigate this cryptic diversity to put it into perspective. In the phylogenetic tree in figure B, we have some evidence of misidentification between some of the Trevally species, um, where if you just follow the blue and the red, we would expect all of the blue sequences to go together and all of the red sequences to go together, but we have a mix there between different species in the genus. So clearly an indication that further in-depth phylogenetic analysis is needed. And then in the top um, bar graph, our honors student this year investigated the variability of the 13 protein coding genes in the mitochondrial genome. Cytochrome oxidase 1 is widely regarded as an international barcode that is used in this kind of project, and we are finding that it's not actually the best gene for marine fish to distinguish between intraspecific genetic variation and species level variation. So we will hopefully dig deeper into this and propose better barcodes for our more than 2,000 fish. <laughs> 